I'm 28 and I'm scheduled to die in May. Why? No reason. Literally no reason. I don't feel good is the reason. Now, I'm sure there are many people who have suffered from depression who are going to say things like, Tim, you don't understand how bad depression can be. I certainly can't say that I've ever been so depressed that I would want to end my life. And I honestly, outside of chemical issues, don't think there is a philosophical uh, depressive reason. That is to say, much of depression that people experience could be resolved by exercise, eating right, finding purpose, and many of these things. However, I do recognize that there is clinical medical depression where someone's brain literally doesn't work. But I understand. I still don't see it as a reason to take someone's life, especially at 28. But here's the story. Now, I have to wonder why this is. You may ask yourself, what is happening to our society that in Europe and Canada, they are ramping up medical assistance and dying to people for being homeless or depressed and to young people. When I was young, the argument was, look, some people are on their deathbed. They're 65. They have terminal cancer. They're being kept alive by machines. And they say, I don't want to live this way. And there's an argument over whether or not they should be allowed to just pull the plug. And one side said, no, you must live. And the other side says, it's your choice. Well, that choice was a slippery slope. Which brings us to this point where now anyone for any reason can just decide to die. But I wonder, are these the political machinations of Malthusian conspiracy uh, conspiracists? Or is that the, uh, maybe that's not the right word. Conspiracists usually imply someone who thinks there's a conspiracy. Malthusian elites who want to whittle down the amount of people in this world. I don't know. I don't know. I think this, this may actually just be a natural result. It may be the way things were always going to go, and it may be that this is all predetermined. Now, how could that be? How could the good Lord maketh as such? Well, what I mean to say is, pending any kind of intervention from strong moral individuals, humans will do this. I don't think you need a grand conspiracy to orchestrate medical assistance in dying or anything like that. I think that strong moral endeavors fail when community breaks and populations grow too large. So it's not just that we're seeing medical assistance and dying. It's that we're seeing all sorts of degeneracy. And it's because there are no, there is no large group of morally strong men and women, of course, to push back against this. Even today, you know, we talk about how Christians are mostly leave me alone. Let me mind my own business. And now churches are becoming LGBT social clubs. There are not enough connected and strong individuals to say no to things like this. Here's a story from the free press. Zoraya Turbik, 28, expects to be euthanized in early May. Her plan, she said, is to be cremated. I did, did not want to be a burden. My part, uh, I did not want to burden my partner with having to keep the, the grave tidy. We have not picked an urn yet, but that will be my new house. She added an urn emoji after house exclamation point. Terbeek, who lives in a little Dutch town near the German border, once had ambitions to be, become a psychiatrist, but she was never able to muster the will to finish school or start a career. She said she was hobbled by her depression and autism and borderline personality disorder. Now she was tired of living, despite, she said, being in love with her boyfriend, a 40-year-old IT programmer, and living in a nice house with their two cats. She recalled the psychiatrist telling her they had tried everything. If there's nothing more we can do for you, it's never going to get any better. At that point, she said she decided to die. I was always very clear that if it doesn't get better, I can't do this anymore. As if to advertise her hopelessness, Terbeek has a tattoo of a tree of life on her upper left arm, but in reverse. There's a funny story. There was some guy, it's an urban legend, perhaps an internet legend. A man who was depressed decided that he was going to kill himself. And so what he did was he flew down to Tijuana did a bunch of drugs, banged a bunch of hookers, and then realized, this is great. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> it's like, yikes. Well, I, I guess that's his cure or it's better than dying. I don't have no idea. It may just be an urban legend. But as the online meme goes, and it dates back some 15 or so years, if you really were thinking about ending your life, then you must realize the world is your oyster. You no longer fear anything. You can do anything. You can be anything. 
If you've truly come to the point where you think nothing is worth it, nothing gets better, and you really want to end it, well, now your risks go to zero. There are, there are many people who have children. The risk for them taking, taking action to change the world, to run for office, to try and invent something, to going off on an adventure and climbing a mountain, the risk is so high. You fall from that mountain, your kid gets hurt. You run for political office, they come for your kids. But if you truly have nothing to live for, you have zero risk. Now, I certainly don't recommend anyone do anything drastic or dangerous. I'm just saying that's the meme on the internet. Unfortunately, now no one has purpose. I mean, I say no one, but many people have no purpose to the point where they're actually going to start killing people because they're bored. I blame her parents. You know, there's a story uh, this past weekend. A second ship crashed into another bridge. The bridge was fine. It reopened in a couple of hours. And, you know, the question is, how does that happen? Well, someone commented and uh, it was fairly astute. They said, boomers did not pass on their knowledge. And I thought to myself, that's really interesting. And I think that's the case. I look back to, uh, I was listening to the song Longview by Green Day. I sit around and watch the tube, but nothing's on. Change the channel for an hour or two. And I was thinking to myself, you know, we used to see in these movies, everybody would say that, man, they looked really old back then. That's what they'd say. It's like in the 90s, this guy's 30. He looks 50. What happened? Well, I think it's, uh, it, it, it may be fairly obvious. When I was thinking about this song Longview, I'm like, sitting around watching the TV, but nothing's on. There used to be so little to watch on TV, you'd leave your house. You'd go outside and into the sun. And the sun would cook you. Uh, long-term exposure to the sun does, does cause skin damage, and it makes you appear to age faster. Not that, that your internal organs are, but, you know, causes damage to the skin. So it's a fact that people who spend more time in the sun will wrinkle faster, and they, they, are, they look older. Now with the internet, everyone's indoors 24-7, and people are starting to look younger and younger. And there are these videos where it's always like, I'm 50, and I look super young. Anyway, my point is this. When I was listening to that song, I thought about Where's his dad to come in and be like, get off your ass and go outside and do something? Then I thought, what was his dad doing? His dad back in the day had little TV to watch, maybe at night when you're home from work. And so before TV, people were mostly out doing things, whatever that thing may be. And so then I think about boomers not passing on this knowledge and how we get to the point where a 28 year old is so bored she wants to die. Huh. And I thought about what it was like when I was a kid. You know, my parents kept saying, go to college. For what? And there, there it is. Now, I certainly expect that many people driving boats have degrees. Maybe. Not everyone. But the real issue wasn't so much whether you had a degree or not. It was that the idea that passing down, telling your kids to take after you, is what we destroyed. We destroyed the millennial generation. We as American society and probably humans. And how did we do it? By telling them not to follow in our footsteps. It used to be that, uh, and it still is in many regards, but, you know, there's a, I went to a maple farm in PA. It was awesome. There was an old man who, sh who showed us how they get the maples out of the tree and the maple syrup and they make the maple candies. And we were really excited. And he had daughters and his daughters were, were inheriting the business. And it was like an eight or ninth generation maple farm. That's amazing. You know, your dad stuck a spigot in a tree and whatever it's called and said, look at this delicious liquid that comes out. We got to cook that down and we'll get delicious syrup. And then uh, he told his son and uh, they started harvesting the maple syrup and the maple sugar because back in the day, maple sugar was the most common sugar. It wasn't sugar cane or beets. It was actually from maple trees. That's how we got sugar for our food and, and, and for bakeries and things like that. It's crazy, right? And so uh, delivering the syrup was very important. And so uh, a man would tell his son, this is how we make a living. People really want this. So we're going to keep making more of it. The, old, the, the kid would grow up, become a young man himself. And the dad would say, you're taking on more responsibilities. And then eventually the old man would say, ah, it's just getting too old for this. And it's your turn, son. You're now going to be in charge. Family stuck together. Fathers passed these things down to their sons. Mothers passed down homemaking and, and home economics to their daughters. Daughters helped maintain the home. 
became wives to keep things in order while the men did the production. Something happened. And I'm, and I'm not saying it's all absolute, but something happened where now it's OK, son, you know, look, I work in computers that will pass down a little bit to you. But now go to college and learn from an institution. Do not learn from me. Do not inherit my trade. Do not learn of my practices. Now, what does this have to do with women killing yourself? This woman is 28. She has no hope and no purpose. She's so bored and depressed and nothing gets better. She wants to die. And I think it's because she has no faith. Nothing was given to her. She has no purpose. Nothing was given to her. She was raised as a blank slate. And that's what you get. Listless vessels. People who say, I don't care. She dreamed of being a psychiatrist, but did not have the will to actually go to school and finish. Why? Honestly, I don't know completely. For me, I suppose when I was growing up, there were hobbies and interests. And, uh, you know, I grew up uh, Catholic. We went to church. I don't know that that informed my will or passion or purpose. Probably. I don't consider myself Christian these days, but I, I do uh, uh I do understand the importance of the Christian moral foundation. And I, I did end up reading um, a bunch of books on philosophy and, uh, and some theology and stuff. And so I don't consider myself Christian. I do, my, I do believe that God exists and I do believe life has purpose. And some have described my views as deist. I honestly don't know. But I wonder if that's it. If you do not teach your children or your society does not teach a younger generation, moral philosophies, be it religious or otherwise. I'm sure many Christians will say Christian, of course. But yes, I'm saying Christian or some kind of strong moral philosophy, understanding rights and purpose. People sit around and think, for what? What is this? I don't know. And that's a scary thing. When I was younger, the idea around the time when I was a teenager that I started to become atheist which was more just doing what I was told as opposed to actually believing something, was rooted very much in if, you know, religions were created because otherwise people would just kill themselves. They'd have no purpose. And so in order to enforce laws and maintain social order, powerful men said, oh, there's a guy. He's going to punish you if you don't listen. I don't know that I believe that's the actual reason. I think that's a young, naive, liberal reason, perhaps. Certainly there are powerful individuals in politics who do use the threat of eternal damnation for political gain. But I think the reality is basic religion in many ways was first an attempt at explanation, but also the understanding of moral philosophies based on how we can live better and we can succeed and the reason why we must carry on our mission. And there is a mission and we choose, we choose, we have free will. But now I see stories like this, this young woman saying it's not going to get better. So just I'm going to die. And I feel like it's unfortunate because, you know, I, I've, I've read much about biological determinism and things like that. And I truly believe that anyone could be anything. I, I really do. I think it has a lot to do with uh, uh, programming, building neural pathways. And while I certainly think that, um, look, like on average, you're not going to get a great Thai basketball player because they tend to be shorter and basketball is a game that requires or that is you, you are benefited by having height. I certainly think that, you know, Muggsy Bowes, uh, he, he, he actually exemplifies, what was he, 5'3", and he could 360 dunk? That dude's a legend. You, you can be. I don't, I, don't, I don't think we've seen the upper limit of human capabilities. But more to the point, more to the point. Turbeek is a growing number of people across the West choosing to end their lives than live in pain. Pain that in many cases can be treated. Typically, when we think of people who are considering assisted suicide, we think of people facing terminal illnesses. But the new group is suffering from other syndromes, depression or anxiety exacerbated, they say, by economic uncertainty, the climate, social media, and a seemingly limitless array of fears and disappointments. Quote, I'm seeing euthanasia as some sort of acceptable option brought to the table by physicians, by psychiatrists, when previously it was the ultimate last resort. I see the phenomenon, especially in people with psychiatric diseases and especially young people with psych psychiatric disorders, where the healthcare professional seems to give up on them more easily than before. Social media. And that's really it, isn't it? It's another thing I was thinking. As I am sitting in the car, we drove to take a look at the uh, wreckage of the bridge because we're an hour away. It's not that far. 
Tons of people were crowding around, staring at this thing that had collapsed. Social media, they say, the plague of our generation. It's good. It's bad. It allows me to bring this video and this podcast to you. At the same time, it melts the brains of people with less mental fortitude. And I'll explain. Depression. I remember when I was a teenager and I was on Friendster. You guys remember Friendster? I remember seeing these photos of kids who lived like my age, my peer group in Chicago. And I was so jealous. Here I was sitting in my room, 16 years old on Friendster. And I see this guy wearing a jean jacket, smiling. And they're like standing next to the, this, you know, like the raised bridge in Chicago with some like another like these are there's a guy I know and like a woman I know. And I'm like, man, they're downtown and I'm just sitting here doing nothing. I'm like, man, these photos look so cool. People posting these like wide angle shots of them, like making faces and smiling and laughing. And I'm like, man, why aren't I doing that? The funny thing is, I was just not at that moment. So many people looked at the highlight reel of social media as this began. And I guess fortunately for me, having lived a portion of my life without the social media, I mean, I was, I, I, my family had the internet since I was a little kid like real little kid, as long as I can remember, AOL back in the day. And uh, went to CompuServe, we had CompuServe on, on DOS or whatever. And I remember uh, realizing like, yeah, yeah, I do hang out with my friends on the weekends. We do stuff like this. We just don't post pictures of it. And everyone was saying, that's just the highlight reel. Don't let it get you down. But now we live in a world where there's nothing but the highlight reel. And more and more what we're seeing is young women, and to a certain degree men, but mostly women, digitally alter themselves to make the most exciting image possible to scream to the world, look how amazing and exciting my life is. And what happens is people begin to think that is normal. When you go on Instagram and you see all of your posts are the most exciting thing imaginable and you're sitting in a cubicle room or you're working at a burger joint, you have no pride in your job. You're like, I'm sitting here flipping burgers. All of my friends are posting these amazing photos from all of this cool stuff they're doing. Here's the reality. Your friend also works at a burger joint. On the weekend, they went rock climbing and posted a picture. Your other friend who works at Best Buy posted a picture of uh, kayaking because they went on the weekend. The thing is, they're not posting pictures of them working at Best Buy. Every single photo you see is kayaking, mountain climbing, skateboarding, snowboarding, skiing, going to the club with friends, getting drunk at the bar. Everything is amazing. You go, I want to do all that, but I'm stuck here in this stupid job I don't want to do. What's happening with social media is that people are starting to view reality as the highlight reel because we don't want to share the mundane and then nobody wants to do the mundane. There's no honor. There is nothing in it, but we are social creatures. We are creatures that want to fit in. So when we see other people do a thing, we want to do it too. I was listening to that song. Better Days, remember that one? By uh, Citizen, <laughs> who, who wrote that song? Better Days song, Citizen what? Uh, oh man, it was too many, it's too many songs called Better Days. Or was it not called Better Days? Better Days and the bottom drops out. Citizen King. I knew it was something like that. And like the first line in the song is, I got a good job at the dollar store. And I was like, dude, there is not a single millennial or Gen Z kid who's going to say that line ever. Go up to their friends and be like, I got a good job at the dollar store, but I've seen better days. A good job at the dollar store? Man, millennials would not accept that. This lady does nothing, doesn't want to do anything. And her story is that she just didn't have the willpower to finish school. This does not seem... Depression and autism and borderline personality disorder. This seems like a young person who was ill prepared by her parents, who had the potential to be everything, but wants nothing. Can't have it. Can't be it. The reality of th this world is, is, no, is no fun anymore. Everyone's posting their highlight reels, pretending to be the, the biggest and the best. You know, it's, it's fascinating because... Uh, we actually, you know, when we were originally launching Cast Castle, it was like we're going to film a vlog and it was a challenge. And I'm like, I still think we should. I, I do still think the, the daily goings on of the IRL Timcast uh, studio is, is vlog worthy. 
It's probably going to shift into what the boonies is. The, uh, go, follow at boonies HQ on Instagram. Search for it on YouTube. Subscribe. But it's going to be a lot of action sports and stuff, but uh, shenanigans, dirt bike, riding around, daily vlog of what's going on in the, in the studios and, and stuff like that with a, with a very action sportsy and shenanigansy environment. And um, the reality is, the challenge of it is, uh, I'll explain to you like right now, what's happening right now at the Timcast studio? There's a couple of people enjoying some delicious uh, yerba mate downstairs. There is a receptionist answering emails. That's it. There's nothing else. Nobody's skateboarding right now. Nobody's playing music. Um, Carter may be here. He may, may be working on some songs. Quiet. You walk through the building and it's an office building. People are sitting at the computers typing away. I think people assume that coming here, there's going to be clowns juggling and chickens running around everywhere. And there's like a deer that sticks his head in the window wanting to get an apple or something. And it's like, you know, life is is what it is. It's all fairly mundane. I wonder if skateboarding helped me with, with this understanding, though, in that you watch a skate video and you see somebody land the trick, they land the trick. And after three minutes, you see all these tricks get landed. But everyone who skates knows it took probably 100, 100 hours to film that part. Traveling to places, very boring. Warming up before getting there, taking days off. Probably, I wouldn't count this towards the hours. But then even when they get there, it takes them like 10 tries, depending on the trick. Some tricks are so dangerous, you're like, nah, we know that he did that right away. But a lot of the tricks are like, I wonder how long it took him to got, get that one. Sometimes you'll see a guy in a video covered in dirt with pants ripped up, and you're like, man, he was there for days. And then they tell these stories like, yeah, it took us days. We had to keep coming back. You know, I fell. I bruised my heels. I had to come back three weeks later. We tried to get it. Finally did it. And so we know everything we watch on those videos is just a highlight reel. But I think the average person right now doesn't understand this. And so their worldview is, my life is boring and I'm depressed. I feel like the desire to be the highlight reel is responsible for so much. Why do people want to be other people? Why are people depressed? Why are people transgender? I'll tell you one component, I think. We know about rapid onset gender dysphoria. You've got young people who, uh, we, what we call rapid onset gender dysphoria is when it's a social contagion element. Some, I, I, I do believe that gender dysphoria existed before this phenomenon, but I do believe a lot of the phenomenon now is due to social media pressures. There was that report about uh, young women who were developing Tourette syndrome from watching TikTokers with Tourette's. People just want to be everyone else. So what happens is if you are a young man and you see all these young women and they have millions of followers and everyone's screaming and cheering them on, we as social beings say, I want to be what people will accept. And now what people are seeing is young women getting millions of followers doing relatively little. Like certainly there are some women who do uh, tremendous feats of strength or whatever, but typically it's like these, these women who are uh, big on Instagram, it's because they're doing sexy poses and stuff. You know, some of them will, like, th there's one female, she likes skates and she does some decent tricks, but then she puts on dresses and she pushes her boobs up. You get a, you get a young guy, he sees this, millions of followers, and for some of these people with, with weaker mental fortitude, they're thinking, I want to be that, because that's what people will accept. And for some reason in my life, no one likes me, people aren't mean to me, I'm not strong, I'm not big, but I could be that. And same thing for trans men. These, these females are seeing these guys who are doing triple backflips and they're seeing all this cheering and they're internalizing it. I'm not saying all issues of transgender is that. I'm saying I believe that plays a role. And now we have this. People who decide to die instead. Perhaps this is predeterminist. Perhaps there is no way to change something like this. Perhaps if people do not have the mental fortitude as prepared uh, by their parents and the generations that came before them, they will be susceptible to listlessness, listlessness, purposelessness, depression, anxiety, and then eventually suicidal ideation. And I don't have the answers for you, my friends. I can only tell you this. You make your purpose. You decide. Every day I wake up, I know what I have to do and why. It is a drive within me. There is a fire that I have lit. It will not go out. And that's why I do a morning show, a nightly show. I skate. We're just doing as much as we can. And I'll tell you why. There's a reason why I'm a big fan of Elon Musk. We should go to the stars. 
Humans should expand. Humans should succeed. Humans should do more. Humans should conquer. We will not do this if we become depressed and weak. We will not do this if we take our own lives. We must strive. We must never give up. And that means we need to be strong. We need to be fit. We need to eat better. You need to cut out the garbage, the high, the high, the processed sugars, the candy, the, the weird chemicals and preservatives. Talk to a doctor. I'm not trying to give health advice, but you should be fit. And a doctor or a nutritionist or something, find a plan. We should be the best we can be because that is our mission. There's no excuse to sit around indulging in the pleasures without our responsibilities. We cannot live this way. It is our mission to expand, to be fruitful, to multiply, and to conquer. So we're going to conquer the stars. We conquered the oceans. We conquered this planet. We have to balance this planet to make sure we don't die because we need that biome. But now we need to build more. This is what we will do. And we'll only do it if people have that drive and that purpose. And that's going to re require, I don't know, maybe not require, but I think what we're seeing now is the reason I think it's, it may be predetermined is that the people of no purpose will just remove themselves. As sad as it sounds, and we don't want that to happen, that's the trend that they're building. And those of us who know our mission, we will, we will carry on. What's the end result? It's evolution, baby. The end result is we win. I'm sad for this woman. I hate this stuff. I don't know what to tell you. Be strong, be fruitful, and multiply. I'll leave it there. Next segment is coming up at 6 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.